Welcome to Common Sense. I'm your host, Laura Fong, and today we're brewing up a flavorful episode. We're at Shoal Premium Ales on tap in Torrance, and they've got a unique blend when it comes to their owners and their craft beers. So let's get ready to brew a Shoal. Scholl Premium Ales is the eighth craft brewery to pour into Torrance. My idea behind Scholl is to make a lot of different beers, a lot of variety of beers. Patrick Schultz is the head brewer and one fourth of the team behind Scholl. He and his wife Mandy, along with friends Allison and Jason Kolb, all started the family owned and operated brewery together. The name Scholl is actually a blend of the two families' names. The journey starts when I met Mandy at a mommy and me class with our two oldest children, and we hit it off and we're instantly friends. Allison and I became fast friends and have been very close ever since the beginning. And Patrick and Jason followed suit. Their friendship moved from the classroom to the Schultz's where Patrick was home brewing. He got me into really understanding beer and I started learning about the process and I'd hang around with him and he'd show me. Patrick says he always wanted to home brew but never had the time or money until he moved to the South Bay to be a music professor at El Camino College. He is a music composition theory person and he's always creating and just super, super passionate about what he does. And then people started to taste our beer, gave out the beer, started winning competitions and people were just like, you make really good beer. Even before homebrewing, Mandy and Patrick were longtime craft beer connoisseurs. Our first date was at a brew pub in Madison, Wisconsin. And ever since we've been going to beer places. I mean, everything that we do somehow is intertwined with beer. When it comes to his beer, Patrick combines his Wisconsin roots with a California flair. In general, the beer in Wisconsin is, is usually thought of as being a little bit more malty, a little bit more bready, and a little less bitter and a little less hot forward. So my beers here at Scholl definitely have that malt backbone, the breadiness, but they have more of a West Coast style of bittering and hop level. Mandy and Allison say friends would rave about how delicious Patrick's beer is and the craft ales definitely won over the Kolbs. But it wasn't until we learned that they actually did want to own a brewery and my husband's always wanted to own his own company that we kind of set the wheels in motion. One of the first steps for the Kolbs was building their own brewing system at home. As a proof of concept, I'm like, well, if I'm gonna start a brewery, I better know how to TIG weld stainless and then I better be able to hook up all the piping. So I welded my own system. Jason, who's a chemical engineer, wanted to make sure he could take Patrick's home brewing system from small to commercial size. I could have much easier bought a system, but I wanted to weld it, build it from scratch, uh, run the pumps, run the tiny little heat exchanger. Another part of the process included drafting a business plan. There was a lot of planning. This is not just something that we decided to do overnight. There's a ton of planning, a ton of research. It took the couples about two years of planning and permitting to finally open the tap room and brewery, which is tucked away in an industrial park off Columbia Street near Maple Avenue. Allison, who's the president and CEO, handles a lot of the paperwork. Definitely contact your city's economic development department. Form partnerships within the city and don't be afraid to ask questions. Everyone's there to help you. There's a lot to learn, there's a lot you don't know until you know that you don't know it, and it's important to build those relationships. From friends to business owners and from home brewing to commercial brewing, we're stepping into the brew house next. I always really wanted to just take my beer to the next level, which to me meant going professional and, and creating uh, beer in this sort of environment. Patrick has been drinking beer since the 90s and has been home brewing since 2008. I was a very active home brewer. I was in a lot of homebrew clubs and I also brewed a couple times with professionals to see their system. When he first started home brewing, Patrick says he read a lot of books and magazines and talked to other brewers about recipes. Then he brewed a lot of different kinds of styles to learn about each kind of beer. From there, started to make my own recipes based on kind of the classic recipes. A typical brew day at Schulp takes about 10 hours. It begins with lighting the kettles to heat the water. The water will come out of our carbon filtered and reverse osmosis uh, system, and the water will go into the tanks in the back. 
Shulb uses two kinds of water filters. That's because the water in Torrance is a little salty and is very high in calcium chloride. We use the city water for a malty beer because calcium chloride will accentuate that maltiness in the beer. Anything that's lighter than an amber-colored beer, we will actually blend with some reverse osmosis water to make the water a little bit softer, and then we'll add gypsum back in, which is uh, calcium sulfate, and that will get a little bit more accentuation to the hops. It's almost like adding salt to food. While Scholb is not the only brewery around to use reverse osmosis, for them, having two filters is important to controlling their flavor profile. And the water then is pumped from the back into the hot liquor tank. A hot liquor tank basically heats all the water that's needed for the brew day. The, once the water is heated, it's pumped up into the mash tun, and that's where the water will interact with the grains and make the mash. From the mash comes the wort, which is unfermented beer. The wort goes and recirculates, then we run it off into the boil kettle. It boils for about two and a half hours and we add hops and finings and different things in the last hour of the boil. The boil then goes through the heat exchanger where it's cooled very quickly, from a boiling 200 plus degrees down to 60 for fermentation. So we have eight different fermenters, eight different conical fermenters, so we can make lots of variety of beer. Each fermenter holds about 31 gallons, meaning Scholb can ferment more than 1,200 gallons of beer at a time. It's very important to make clean beer, so you make sure that you're very sanitary and that all the steps are including good cleaning and good sanitary practices to make good clean beer with direct flavors. And that really, I believe, shines through in the final product. After weeks of fermentation comes the beer, like the Cherry Wood Smoked Brown Ale. One of our most popular of our sort of darker beers. Okay, very cool. What do you think people like about it so much? I think they appreciate the fact that it's not overdone with the smoke. Um, it definitely has that component of flavor to it, but you don't taste it and it doesn't taste just like a campfire. It actually has the chocolate and the nuttiness and the smoke kind of blended in very subtly on the side. And then there's the hop nozzle, which Scholl brewed as part of a collaboration with the South Bay Brewing Supply Company. So Citra hops, Simcoe hops, and Amarillo hops, three very sought after hop varieties that have very nice qualities and taste just really nice in, a, in an IPA style beer. So what does it mean to put all three of them together versus one, uh, uh, you know, three times of one? Yeah, well you're essentially creating your own blend of hops at that point. Uh, Citra, like the name suggests, is very citrusy. Uh, Simcoe has kind of a more of a pine quality to it. And then the Amarillo is very grapefruity and citrusy as well. So when you combine the three together, it creates a little more complex flavor. Then there's the Double Dad's IPA, which is the sequel to the Dad's IPA, which is looking like the front runner for most popular beer. I'm hoping that, that people will enjoy it if they like Dad's IPA. It has a similar hop profile. Um, it features a hop called El Dorado, which is very tropical. It almost has a quality of like a red colored Jolly Rancher, if you can believe that. And then I blend that with uh, Centennial and Cascade, which again are a little bit more grapefruity and a little more on the citrus scale. There are a lot of steps to making beer and the process to start a business isn't any simpler, but it helps to have a balanced team. When we come back, we'll learn about the business behind the beer. Scholl Premium Ales is all about balanced beer and a balanced team. You have to understand that you can't do everything and you really have to have people that you can trust to do the things that you, you either can't do or that you don't have time to do. While Patrick makes the beer, Jason is the one that made the system. You got to apply some lean manufacturing techniques and think about how many steps you're going to take between the fermenter and the brew house, how long your hoses need to be, your equipment. Plus Jason, who is the chief financial and operating officer, also designed the taproom layout and built everything from the tables to the bar. I built the uh, barrier bar, welded that, and put a nice top on it. Did the main bar, which is like our showpiece, uh, covered with a nice bar top epoxy that just shines in the sunlight. While he takes on the building aspect, Allison handles more of the behind the scenes work. I respect her so much more because I know I come to her with some challenging legal question and she'll give me the right advice. I was um, working for real estate developers and owners and it taught me a lot about forming a business and what kind of paperwork is involved and 
from business license all the way to tax returns. Mandy takes care of the front of the house. She's the tap room manager and she's also in charge of advertising, social media and customer relations. When you come into my tasting room, I'm going to ask you what kind of beer you like, where you've been, what interests you here. I will help you pick a flight. I want you to come in here and I want you to feel comfortable and I want you to just have a great experience and kind of live by our motto, relax, enjoy, repeat. Repeat responsibly. The husbands and wives and friends complement each other and all work well together. I would have thought that it wouldn't work at all, but I think it's even brought us closer together. You know, it's one thing to come home from work and you're complaining about your job, but we're a part of this venture, so we're a team and our main goal is to make it work, so we collaborate more, we're not just complaining. But it's not always easy either, since these are important relationships that are being challenged with the stress of a growing business. Sometimes, I mean, what I'm, another thing I'm learning, it's hard to, to not have feelings involved. It's learning that this is a business and this is a business goes this way, so it's a learning process. The couples have strong partnerships and are working through the process together. It's a roller coaster. There are a lot of highs, there are definitely lows, um, but for the most part, it's super fun. Here are some tips the budding business owners have for entrepreneurs out there. You may want your business degree over a brewing degree, for sure. You may want to just brush up on some podcasts. There's a lot of good information out there. If you have a very good business plan and you follow the appropriate steps, go for it. Just expect to work your tail off, but it is worth it. It really is worth it. The kettle is just heating up for this brewery as Scholp continues to brew clean beers with direct flavors that are winning over the South Bay. It's almost unbelievable, really. I just think back to us, oh, let's start a brewery, and we did it. I mean, it's a great accomplishment. And it's sometimes I have to pinch myself to, like, is this really for real? Special thanks to Scholb for welcoming us to their tap room and brewery. If you want to try Scholb beers, head to 2964 Columbia Street, or to learn more, head to their website, drinkscholb.com. And the next time you're on Facebook, head to our page, Common Sense Torrance, and hit that like button. The fermentation process is over, so I just want to say thank you so much for watching Common Sense, where we offer you a rare, behind-the-scenes look at local businesses and explore the secrets to their success. So remember, relax, enjoy, and repeat.